So for years, I tried to do the splits. Now, I may be many things, but flexible is not one of them. So, but I stretched, I practiced, I coaxed, but on my day of personal rejoicing, the day that I got farthest down, I'm not going there, <laughs> that I ever did, I was still a good inch and a half, two inches off the ground. Shoulders, back, I just wish I was as flexible as Gumby. The iconic animated character for this first week in our series in Reshaped is Gumby, and that was a grand feat in the world of stop motion animation for its time. So creating stories and film by moving little clay pieces one little tiny step at a time really is a wonderful way of describing the movement of change. It cannot happen all at once. There is a process, and sometimes that process can seem painstakingly slow. Gumby's creator, Art Clokey, was a very spiritually minded, if not Christian person, who really cared that his characters bring light and love to his viewers. So that Gumby figurine brought joy to many children with its flexibility and was pretty much a phenomenon of its time as well. So then phrases like, be Gumby, Gumby or Semper Gumby became mantras for staying flexible in the face of difficulty. I want us to sit with that phrase for just a second. Flexibility in the face of difficulty. How many times over the last several years have we had to be flexible in the midst of changing times? I'm just thinking of moving from all in-person church to instantaneous online church when the pandemic hit. Or opening up of conversations around all those controversial issues from gun control to sexuality to general conference, allowing ourselves to be flexible, to learn and to grow from each other and our differing points of view. Flexibility in what we provide for ministry because of leadership change due to moves or deaths or just disagreements in the direction that we have chosen to take as a church. So I'm hereby saying that Desert Skies has learned successfully to channel its inner Gumby. Do I get an amen? amen. Now the first week of a new series is always partly about introducing the focus or uh, the lens through which we're going to look at our spiritual journey through the month of June. The lens of flexibility and change, friends, that is something that we all have in common. I mean, when someone says the word change, don't we immediately have some sort of gut reaction? Now, Brian McLaren, in his book, Do I Stay Christian, wrote, I used to think that things were real and change was something that happened to them over time. Now I think that change is real and things are events that happen over time. Change is the constant and things come and go, appear and disappear. So the first week's main message is this. Not only can we survive change, we were made for change. And this biblical metaphor that's used by the prophet Jeremiah to plead for a change in the hearts and minds and behaviors of the people of his time was clay. God is like this potter at the wheel shaping us. Now we can resist or we can go with it, discovering more about God's possibilities for us and even when we have mishaps in the midst of change, anyone ever made an unfortunate choice? <laughs> Any of us messed up big in some way? God continually reshapes us again and again and again. And as long as we stay malleable in the hands of the creator, change will not break us. And isn't that just one of the best things 
that you've ever heard? We will not break. And in our text today, we discover that Jeremiah is asked by God to leave all of his familiar spaces, step away from the scriptures and the sanctuaries, bypass all the committee meetings and professional development seminars, and instead learn about God and God's people by watching an artist at work. And most of us, at one time or another, have watched an artist at work. Maybe we visited a potter's shed, and we've watched someone throw a pot or watched a painter mix her paints and fill her canvas in the open air. I love watching the um, chalk artists at Disneyland, you know, when they create the pictures of the family with the really big heads and the really itty bitty bodies, but you, they still get the essence of the family. Or maybe you have watched a weaver weave um, all those wonderful different colors and all of a sudden it creates this beautiful weaving or maybe you've smelled the shavings in a woodworker's uh, garage as he or she shapes and matches the joints that will secure board to board. Or you've heard the songwriter test chord progressions and lyrical phrases as she scribbles and strums and hums. And when we do, we can learn something new about God and how God works in us. We can hear this fresh summons for God's people to creatively work within ourselves and within community to bring about necessary changes wherever we are. Now, there are a whole lot of other scriptures that invite us to imagine God as ruler and judge, writer, teacher, farmer, builder, father, mother, lover. But Jeremiah 18 invites us to see God as artisan, as an artist. Now that image is not new in scriptures. At the very beginning, Genesis chapter one, portrays God as the first poet, designer, metal worker, landscaper, as God speaks and divides and fashions and populates the cosmos. And then in chapter two, verse seven, God first shapes clay sculpting and forming humankind from the sediment of the earth. And as God's ha hands knead and smooth the moist dirt, we read that God breathes uh, life into God's new creation so that the human being is simultaneously grounded in this connection to earth and then animated by the very breath of God. And now in Jeremiah 18, we hear that God did not simply shape us once and for all. To this day, God tells Jeremiah, God's people are like clay that has not been fired. Now, what's the difference between clay that has been fired and clay that has not been fired? Well, clay that has been fired in a kiln dries and shrinks and hardens into a permanent structure and shape. It might be decorative, it's often functional, um, and most office, often it's designed for a single purpose. A brick, or a tile, a bowl, a plate, a mug, a vase, a pitcher, a storage jar, a lamp, and it's really easy to break. Such clay, which is now dry ceramic, is often lovely, and is often useful. It's also specialized and rigid and it's brittle. Now clay that has not been fired is still plastic. It can be shaped and reshaped indefinitely. And it's a material of possibility. It's moldable, flexible, and responsive. So though God shaped humankind and breathed life into its nostrils, God did not fire the clay from which God made us. So not any one of you is only a tile, a pitcher, or a lamp. You see, God is able to reshape you and shape you no matter what your age or stage in life. And God labors tirelessly at the potter's wheel on your behalf. God assesses your character, perceives your strengths and your weaknesses, 
builds on your strength, and then when flaws are found in you, works diligently to remedy them. As that old hymn goes, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. I, thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. Now that hymn was written more than a century ago, and I'd say we are not so good at waiting anymore, especially the yielded and still part. We tend to want to make and mold our own lives, so we have shelf after shelf of self-help books and seminars we can go to to discover our purpose and make us into what we want to be. We don't allow ourselves in any way to be made and molded. We want to have our own way and not the way of the divine potter. Now, I have to say, God is not waiting for any of us to show up in some perfect form, nor is God waiting to jump on us and smash us for all the stuff that we do wrong. God just really wants to shape us into the very best humans that we can be. And yet, whether we are gritty or smooth, malleable or a little bit stiff, flecked with impurities or deeply flawed, affects the Creator's plans for us. And so the question then becomes this. Are we willing to trust God with all of our flecks and fall, flaws, our foibles, our failures, and really trust that the Master Potter can make something beautiful out of us? Because trusting God is allowing ourselves to be centered in the will of God, much like a pot is centered on the potter's wheel. Allowing God to take the raw material that we are and slowly but steadily fashion it into a vessel of both utility and beauty. Can we have a little faith that God is able and willing to do just that in our lives? I love how uh, the Reverend Lily Brock helps us with a more scientific approach by her introduction to what she calls the change cycle, which describes our neurobiological and emotional and spiritual and intellectual reactions to every step of change. If you Google the change cycle, you'll see that. Or if you were, um, oh, I said it the first service and now I can't, what was the name of the show? that I mentioned, oh well, whatever. There was a show that um, talked a lot about that. I'll, I'll get it as soon as the sermon is over. But <laughs> she highlights the neurological miracles that we have been created to, the Big Bang Theory. Got it before, got it before the sermon was over. Now, a lot of this is in there, talks about um, how we are sort of Gumby-esque in our neuroplasticity. That's the big word there that our brains are extraordinarily adaptable and flexible. And that gives us the ability to reshape our thinking, to reshape our behavior, and even the way that we look at the world. And friends, that is extraordinarily good news because change is inevitable. So the bottom line, God gave us the capacity to withstand change to enact change, to actually be the change that we want to see in the world. We were made for this. Amen. <laughs>